Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Right, let's get to the Justin. There we are. We have a lot of traffic tonight in terms of rail and aircraft. So a lot of audio signals. The audio signals change almost on a nightly basis. Anyways, it is 23 hours and 20 minutes, one minutes into uh, the 8th day of November 2021. And Lyle's uh, daily briefing today was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, gives you a lot to think about, a lot to talk about, because he misses the point on several things, and it's just because he's just simply not I'm trying a different miking method in order to get uh, a better background sound because audio is the key point here when you're doing uh, acoustical physics. Your observation is not with your eyes, but with, with your ears. So There are a number of things he doesn't necessarily understand, he's not necessarily aware of. Uh, let's begin with, uh, to give you an example, his issue with his computer, he's got a Mac, and he's getting something known as a kernel panic. Oh, what's a kernel panic? Well, kernel panic, if you know the history of Apple and Apple iOS, and their, uh, even their so-called <laughs> operating system X, which was operating, some of them got operating system 10. I know it's actually X because uh, the Apple operating system basically is Linux. It's uh, a form of Linux known as BSD, Berkeley Software Development. Uh, and that's where it gets its uh, whole uh, sort of stick from. It's, its existence is from there. And so anything that goes wrong is anyone who understands Linux understands the issue of a kernel panic. The kernel panic is the, a, the collapse of the operating system. It's the blue screen of death. But unlike... Uh, unlike uh, Microsoft. Microsoft could be a number of different issues in terms of even software issues. Typically, the the kernel panic or, or the blue screen of death uh, in Linux is due to some error or collapse of the uh, uh, of the hardware. It's a, it's a hardware issue. And essentially, what he, what what Lionel has to do is replace his laptop. That kernel panic is a signal you need a new laptop. So, his laptop has gone off, and so that's where the issue is. Yeah, yeah, you see, he doesn't understand this. This is not within his within his quiver in terms of what he understands. In terms of you know, the quiver is the storage for the bows and air for for the arrow, the, the number of uh, arrows you carry. You could to determine another train coming. Heard the low horn. <sighs> this is why uh, observation takes so long. You do have to wait for events to occur. And sometimes you get a lot of events, sometimes you get very little events. And sometimes the events are spaced out. Sometimes you do get a lot of events, but they're spaced out between. You know, one hour and the next hour, so you don't always get everything you hope to get for. So you have to come back again and again and again. Uh, this is the nature of nature of observation. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what you observe. And it's, it's a lot like fishing. Fishing, in many cases, hit is hit or miss for most people. Uh, and the only way you get good at it is by going. The more you go fishing, the better you, the, the better you get at. You get to learn the t the tricks and the diff different sort of things to help you out in order to succeed and so on and so forth. And, once again, if you don't have enough experience in it, just well, you know, I, you know, I could sit down and talk all day long about the theory of the courtroom, but uh, of 
I have had some practice in the courtroom, uh, but not the way Lionel has. And uh, uh, theory and what's going on in the courtroom is uh, an entirely different thing. And I know lawyers who are these so-called theoretical lawyers where their degree is on paper, but uh, they've never really stepped into a courtroom. And uh, they've made horrible mistakes <laughs> because they... Just, you know, they thought, okay, I've got the book, I've got the degree, uh, I wrote my test, and yay for me, and I'm going to go into the courtroom, and I'm going to succeed. And, well, not, it's not as easy as that. Uh, there, there is something to be said for experience, uh, and experience is not necessarily uh, something that you can, you can transcribe to an intellectual uh, quantity, if you will. I have to think of my words here sometimes. I mean, how you phrase yourself is is a necessity because if you misstate something, even though these are rough draft essays in a verbal sense, that uh, uh, you still do have to make an effort to be uh, as appropriate as you can with uh, your diction the use of words. And appropriate does not necessarily mean being bad or good in terms of uh, describing something that is you know, sexual. Appropriate means that the word the diction fits to the character and nature of the thing you're talking about. So that's the whole thing in terms of appropriate. It's, again, it's not necessarily the most common, def common use of the word uh, uh, appropriate, but it is none, nonetheless within sufficiently within its range of definitions in terms of being the a a uh, a term of quality in terms of your diction that, that it's a, that is well appropriate to use. <laughs> so, um, the whole thing about the metaverse, the metaverse has a number of different things, number di number of different existences. And so has the uh, uh, what's coming up with Facebook and uh, now Microsoft. But see, Facebook and Microsoft are kind of late to the game. And Google was the first one out with augmented reality and they had uh, 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 Google VR, they had uh, VR goggles from Google. Google came out first because Google sits right on the edge of what we call the popular universe and the called Linux open source. Uh, basically, Google is Linux or open source. It's, it, it just takes everything right from open source and that's the way, in the way it goes. And so a lot of the VR goggles were coming out of, uh, out of open source and you had a lot of early adopters and stuff like that. And it just, it didn't work out. They it had some fanfare for, for about a month or two months and then just disappeared. <laughs> Uh, I know this uh, with Android. Android had a lot of, and this was the later edition of this. Android had a lot of VR goggles. There was tons of them on the Asian market, all over the place. That fizzled out, didn't go anywhere. Uh, now you have Oculus. This is Facebook's attempt at VR goggles, and that market starting to fizzle out. So they're trying to do more with it. Uh, I'm seeing some attempt at the new VR goggles, but the they don't seem to really be having that much of an impact in terms of uh, the capturing the sales that uh, the sellers, the resellers, and the sort of the equipment and manufacturing would have hoped for. It's hard to read the market. This is, this is the whole thing. It's hard to read the market. So you will get some sales. You will get some purchases of the VR. It will have some impact impact on people who uh, have mental disturbances. Uh, it's it's not going to be the end of everything. But what happens is typically, uh, and then this is kind of the nature of things is that the way it's always been is it's, it's never it's never about. And this includes you know for those who consider themselves to be woke. Well, it, it, what happens, the person who is woke on the left is, is basically the person who has accepted a master 
and is determined to be a slave. They're happy with being a slave. And so they will not question the system. This is what you're seeing with the vaxxers. And as I was saying, on the left and right, you have the conspiracy theorists, both sides. Both sides are sitting down and having discussions with them. Bring out the details. These are, and just basically bring out the details. You know, discussing, you know, with a flat earther, why the earth is flat, and talking about, you know, the op, the, op, the, the, the dimensions uh, uh, of geometry that typically most of the math that we learn in the school in terms of the geometry. It is a flat space geometry, it's known as Eucl Euclidean geometry uh, from the mathematician Euclid. And of course, all of your calculus is based in this. And all, you know, even Pythagoras was was uh, flat space geometry. They really didn't get too much uh, Archimedes. They didn't really get too much into the third dimension. They were describing things in the <coughs> just within the two within the two dimensions. And they thought this was sufficient because you could project the three dimensions, like the, the stars, the maps, and so forth. I mean. <laughs> Maps are not definite, are, are not made because they're flat. Maps are made because there's no way of, of really producing the globe in terms of, of having your charts and everything. The charts are the Cartesian coordinates. But the understanding of these Cartesian coordinates, to understand the nature of the Cartesian, Cartesian coordinates, you have to do a bit, uh, you have to do two things. You have to understand the night sky because you steer by stars, you, this is the GPS. The GPS of that time was basically they used uh, the the, uh, the positions of the moon, the planets, and uh, the background stars. They all had inter interplays. They all had interrelations, and this is was the development uh, of the so-called the astronomical calendar that sort of that we are existing on today, and it's the it's the more most I think the most elaborate calendar ever in terms of its uh, 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 construction in that it was based on close to 3,000 years worth of uh, star charts. So they had 3,000 years worth of data that they built their, their, their models on. And so they, they had a lot of data to, to, to work with. And so their, their models were very, very accurate. And so they were able to put up a map an accurate map of the sky. And this is why when the Pope looked at this thing and saw, started looking at the at the, uh, the sort of the, the older astronomical calendar known as the Julian calendar, he said there was a lot of errors in there. Well, yeah, because there's a lot of errors in the orbit. They didn't realize that there were errors in the orbit. But these guys, the, the early astronomers, had tracked this to such a degree that they were able to show that the sky moved, that there was a movement of the stars and not only with the movement of the stars, but, but how the planet was tilted, this is known as precession, mattered. <laughs> and this is why, in many cases, you have, in terms of, the, you know, the, go, go look at the Mayan clan calendar. Understand the Mayan clan, and understand why the Mayan clan calendar ended. And again, it, it has to do with the issue of precession. And these ancients understood this. They were, able to, they were actually with, with their instruments at the time. They were able not only to calculate this, but they were able to measure it as well. And then you could see some of the astronomical uh, monuments of these of, of these measures in, in in India, and they're they're, they're just phenomenal. And they did have a sense, of, you know, of when things were because they knew where they were in terms of the. In terms of the interstellar maps. The maps weren't didn't weren't there to tell you where you were, but to tell you when you were. Once you knew when you were with a proper uh, uh, stellar configuration, then you, then you could translate it, that into a map. And this is how uh, mapping and cartography got started. It got started with the maps of the sky, using the maps of the sky to, term, to, t to tell time. You had your sundial for the actual particular day of time. 
the time of day, but in terms of the time of the year, the time of the season, where the Earth was in its particular orbit, not what not was what we call the calendar. And they use that calendar to determine, okay, we're at this point here. The star goes west, and they followed a particular star to its zenith, the point where it stands above you. And that's how they began to realize, okay, this point is here, this point. And this is over over close to 3,000 years before they sort of perfected this. And now they've put this into a computer model. Uh, they, 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 you have them on the system. You can, you can put it, uh, create a planetary. And now the system is so accurate, you can run, and if you want to sort of uh, go in and study ancient astronomy, you can run your computer and the planetary on the computer back to the time uh, when a particular, say, archaeology archaeology is done. Look at the at the timer, and you'll see the scar the stars, particularly Orion, lines up with the monuments that were built. And I think Orion was used. That was the 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 one that looks like a man walking. That was used globally for a lot of different uh, monuments. And you could tell by the three stars the way the three stars are uh, the, are laid out. You could look at the, look at that and look look at look at. Oh, we got another train coming in. Good night for trains. starting up. We've had trains, but we haven't had a, a good number of horns while we're talking. We had horns earlier indicating direction, but we haven't had uh, we haven't had uh, trains. Hopefully, with the, well, the way I've mic'd it now, uh, a lot more of the background noise will come into play. And here we go. The girls that are across from me uh, at a dance school. It is literally the uh, Big Bang scenario, Big Bang Theory scenario. <laughs> cute girl across the cute girls will cross the way from uh, a nerdy scientist. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was talking about uh, some of the things the ancients understood in, in the older world understood that we don't we've kind of lost today. It was sort of disconnected from us. We don't have an understanding of lunar position in respect to the background stars. We don't have an understanding of the calendar, you know, the solar positions uh, in terms of the days with the background stars. We were disconnected in many ways uh, from the elements of history, including, including how the elites operate, the so-called shadow government. The shadow government returns to a period of time, that's what we sort of need to think of, of the old days of empire. There are, it's an issue of conquest. And they manage the world in the way they see fit, so it doesn't necessarily matter what we think is, is irrelevant. So the whole, con whole battle of COVID, vax or not vax, has nothing to do with the issue. The issue is... They, this is, comes up in, in the um, 
in Glasgow. It has to do with how the about the environment. They're out there to protect the environment. How do you protect the environment? Well, you have to kill X number of people because the world is overpopulated. And <laughs> the way you go, that's the way it is. I forgot something. Okay. <laughs> And of course, who's the problem on, on, that causes the pollution on Earth? It's people, people, human beings are. So they need to k kill off X number of people. And it doesn't matter whether they get vaccinated or not vaccinated. What they want is the conflict because they benefit from the conflict. These, this is the hedge funds uh, who are up there. Uh, but in terms of the overall structures, they just need to get rid of some X number of people so that the world's more manageable. This is how they view it. And so it doesn't matter. Whether you get vaccinated or not, it's the fact that you die. <laughs> so the death number counts, the number of people who die count. This is the nature of the whole thing. And of course, this is what the establishment wants. This is this is what establishment means. And of course, people like BLM and Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> you need anything or you, just, <laughs> you need any help or no, instead of being anti-establishment because they are by definition anti-establishment because this is what anarchy, anarchy is about anarchy is about being anti-establishment they come from a postmodern sense of uh, where the nihilists are peaceful the anarchists are believe in known as deconstructionism and deconstruction is, is the violent takedown of the old establishment it is the violent conflict the violent hegelian dialectic uh in order to produce progress this is how they're viewed and this is how they're used they're actually used by the establishment to create these issues to sort of create from create progress and by burning down the old society this is what they're there for and this is well, why is Antifa and, uh, and you know BLM showing up now? That's because they're part of the establishment. They're being used by the establishment. The woke don't understand this. The woke left doesn't understand this. They don't understand that they're being used. But this is sort of how this sort of whole situation evolves. And so what happens is you don't in history you don't have racism. You have classism. You have the rule of empire. And as kings, queens, it's it's an imperial situation. But what happens is you have the creation of the social environment, the humanist environment, and it comes from Voltaire. And this is how Lionel fits into all this. As a way of pushing people away from the magic, which is limited. Magic is limited. It's only dealt out in certain in certain amounts. You have to understand the fragments that are that are that are given to you. They're stored in gems like amulets. Uh, they're stored in symbols like Moloch the Owl on the dollar, or the or, or the or the pyramid. These, these pyramids are 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 said to be uh, warehouses or storage jars of energy. I mean, people studying. Uh, uh, pyramids, in terms of pyramid power, note how the pyramid, particularly the, on the inside, is structured a lot like the Leyden jar. The Leyden jar was the first, basically your first capacitor. It was a bottle that literally with uh, two separate me uh, points of metal in there, two types of metal, uh, and they're basically a leaf when the, the charge was there, the leaf separated because the uh, charges are, are aligned so they were with the same charge, and and it's it it stored the power right within the jar, uh, and of course when you tap and you got a spark and you know this is the nature of a capacitor. The, the capacitor stores power for X amount of time. Well, the inside of a pyramid looks like the Leyden jar. It looks like a structure that is going to store power. And of course, this is where you get into the whole, the whole thing of ley lines, uh, 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 different. Uh, the, the ley line, the the, the, uh, 
the power grid that covers the entire universe, uh, the entire uh, uh, planet. Then you get into uh, the zero point energy. And from there, we get into the metaverse. The metaverse is hooked into all this stuff. But this is the stuff that, that Lionel will not get into. Doesn't, doesn't want to get near it. I don't understand why, because this is where your aliens are. This is going back to the Anunnaki. But he doesn't want to go there. I, I, I don't particularly understand why he doesn't want to. Well, oh, you can't talk about that on YouTube. Well, I'm talking about it. We'll see what happens. But then again, I'm not very popular. <laughs> so, you know, go figure. Anyways, uh, that's it for tonight. And I'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow night. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.